Hey everyone, I'm Ellie. Welcome to Porcelina. I've played Dinkum for over 1800 hours using no mods, no dev commands, and no skipping days. Just pure vanilla gameplay. As of today, my island is over 14 Dinkum years old. This is the story of my island. Lookout Bridge has a nice history. It used to be an outlook tower on one side before it became this massive structure at the entrance of the town. The idea is to get a great view of the town, the farm, and the river. The staircase uses a method I came up with to help get up high without taking up too much space. Also, the winding staircase style makes it more pleasing than basic steps that go straight up and take up a lot of horizontal and vertical space. This town entrance speaks for itself. It predates the nice cement letters and the waterbeds, but I knew these items would complete the look the second they were introduced. Porcelina is named after one of my favorite songs, Porcelina of the Vast Oceans by my favorite band, The Smashing Pumpkins. This highway connects the town to the Welcome Center. It's a black cobblestone road that runs through a lush forest, and we pass a few dangerous croc-infested billabongs along the way. After I created my city limits, I decided to create a road system throughout the island. That way, no matter where you travel, there's always a road nearby that leads you back home. The Welcome Center is one of my most viewed tiny tours. Hi everyone, it's Ellie. Today I'm going to show you my welcome center. I finally finished it. This is where everything began for Ellie. Fletch and I landed at the docks and I set up camp nearby. Over time, I decided to move the town to the center of the island along the main river, but I never forgot where I came from. I decided to come back and decorate it to be a grand welcome center for visitors with massive waterfalls and fountains, beaches, and a grand quad helipad. Just one helipad, but four. I did four because you can you can have four people on your island, so I thought if everyone had their own helicopter, then they'd have somewhere to park. It's pretty and peaceful, and always reminds me of where this incredible journey began. The island getaway was created because the Northern Teletower was out on a small island. I also learned that it was in the middle of tons of pearl hunting spots. So I created a fun getaway place for when I spent my days pearl farming. And who doesn't love the idea of a quiet island getaway with a 360 degree view of the beautiful coral filled ocean. Lake Fletch is a natural beauty dedicated to the one who brought us to the island. The lake was unusually large and just happened to be located between the Welcome Center and the town entrance. It's a short walk from town, and I like to think that Fletch would spend her time off here. Club Jelly is an original Porcelina establishment. I wanted a rooftop dance club. And because it was a small tropical biome area, turkeys would spawn here, and I would love to watch the turkeys dance around. Club Jelly could use some renovations, it's true, but it's also still a very cool place to hang out. My small doggo area is home to my four doggos. There's Mikey and Ghost, and my two rare Jack Russells, who are named Lucky and Charms. They have a nice manicured fence yard and a water hole. They even have toys to play with. Ellie's place is my home. For a long time, I didn't really have a decorated area, just a house and a small fence yard. When I finally dedicated some time to create a nice space for my home and vehicles, I came up with Ellie's place. I have an Ellie pad for my helicopter, plus spots for my ute, boat, jet ski, and motorbike. I have a nice big fenced yard, and my pretty purple house sits atop a flower-covered hill with jacaranda trees. Inside, we find a light and bright organized space, a bedroom, living room, kitchen, and closet space. Really, it was the best I could do with the limits of Dinkum interior decorating. My crab pot farm blesses me with treasures daily, as long as I remember to harvest it and refill the traps with meat. I have 10 traps because I feel like that is a reasonable amount of meat 
to find or have on hand daily. I get anywhere from two to eight keys a day, and I store them in a nearby chest for when I need them to go to the mine, undergrove, or the island reef. I also get some funny finds like thongs, jelly, and random teeth. My flower shop has been in this location as long as I can remember. Of course, it has grown a lot with the updates that have brought us new flora along the way. I have a single row for each type, organized by color for the most part. I also have my honey production here. You gotta take care of the bees. I harvest the rows of flowers regularly, always leaving one or two to repopulate the boxes. The rest I store in the boxes nearby, so I always have plenty of flowers to decorate with. Stardinks is a fun take on a coffee shop. It's near many of the NPCs, and I often find them roaming around here. It's loosely based on Central Perk from the TV show Friends, one of my favorites. Fun fact, this used to be my storage pit before I outgrew the space. Gumwood Road is a tree-lined road that begins at the northern city limits entrance and leads all the way down to the river and shopping district. I wanted to plant flowers around the base of the trees, and this was the first time I buried flower boxes to create this look. Pineapple Corner has a cute little green and yellow hangout space full of pineapples, bush limes, and bananas. Hammocks and umbrellas make it a perfect central area to get some rest. The shopping district is home to many of my NPCs. We have Sally's Salon, Clover's Thread Space, Sheila's Tucker Box, Melbourne's Furniture, Milburn's Bank, and John's Goods. And of course, the City Hall and Fletcher in the area. It reminds me of a main street in a small town. And when they all gather to come to the Tucker Box, it's just a fun sight to witness. Checking the shops and making my rounds is easy when they're all near each other. The museum area has been here forever. It really hasn't changed much. I think Theodore loves history and he's happy in his established location. There's a nice and small VIP helipad out back for those who need it. The bandstand came along way after I began playing. I had this open area towards the entrance and decided to place it down there. I was never really sure if I would relocate it or not. But once I had my first Dinkum day and all the NPCs gathered around the space, I felt like it was actually the perfect place for the bandstand. They love to wade in the shallow canal and wander over to the town entrance sign. I also tucked away my visitors camp over here behind the pines. With everyone moved in, I don't get many visitors these days. Ellie's workshop is located across from Franklin's lab for obvious reason. He loves to come to the workshop. It received a makeover recently and now we call it the Color Pop Workshop. The new color tiles really liven the place up from the cement floors and walls from before. Just as you would expect, we have most of our machines, workbenches, and chargers here. Efficiency at its best. The treasury is the place for everything. It also recently underwent an expansion. It is completely organized by type with room to grow. I also added a wardrobe for clothing items and a bedroom for a good night's rest. The treasury is also home to the beautiful cherry pad, which was built by Offending Commit. He is the only person who has built on this island besides me. He built me two helipads. We will see the other one in a little bit. He was granted special privileges because he's my husband and my biggest supporter. Plus he's really good at helipads. In addition to the chest, wardrobe, and helipad, I also have pits for my natural treasures. One side is gems and amber, and the other side has huge eggs, fossils, and beehives. These are all precious items you can't put away in your pocket or a storage chest. If you try, you will destroy them. The VIT party was a fun random idea I got one day. I wanted to build a posh, exclusive tea party area. I wanted it to be fancy, so I built it up and made a winding staircase around the outside. I covered it with fairy lights. At the top, there's a fancy dining area with cakes and tea and the most beautiful view all around. At night, the fairy lights make it look like a skyscraper to me. With the treasury and tea party, this area was becoming quite the scenic district. I decided to build a pyramid surrounded by water and tiki torches. 
I often catch a frilly on the top of the pyramid, and it's a pretty cool thing to witness. The dam is one of my all-time favorite unique builds. We love taking pictures of the old architecture and looking out on the lake. It is based on a real dam in Oklahoma City, USA. I used to visit the dam often when I lived in Oklahoma. I decided to dam the lake here and have my mine at the bottom. The Overholzer Dam had a house structure that covered the mechanical area where they would open the dam gates. So I placed a guest house on top to represent that. And it functions as a great place to sleep after a mine run. Along with the dam is the dam park area and the other helipad built by Offending Commit. I wanted the area to feel like a protected and well-maintained state park. On the other end of the dam is the West Tele Tower, and there's a small beach here as well. This fountain garden is just a pretty display to fill in this corner that was formerly barren desert land. I needed something pretty to complete the area, but I kept the natural ores that spawned on the side. The airport is such a wonderful addition to Dinkum. I named the airport Fly Blue. It's a name and slogan in one. While we don't have an airplane or a need for a runway, I created one anyway. When designing the airport, I picked a blue and white color scheme to match the building colors. There is dedicated lanes for departures and arrivals and a luggage claim area for carry-on and drop-off items. I use this area for emptying my pockets before Sunday trips to the island reef. Also, the carry-on chest contains everything I need to remember to take with me to the island. In the waiting area, you'll find comfort and entertainment. In the back, there's a lost and found and animal drop-off points. On each side, you will find a helipad and a hot air balloon landing pad. The hot air balloon is a cute addition. I think it's a great way to show people around your island. It's definitely a great people mover, but it's slow. So I think many people still pile on a heli. I like the slow chill balloon ride myself. My beloved pier was one of my first tiny tours. Hi everyone. I've got something to show you. Follow me. Ta-da, this is my pier. It was based on the piers I visited in Los Angeles, out by Malibu in Santa Monica. These are long boardwalk piers. You walk out to see, smell, and absorb the ocean air. Such a great memory of mine. Porcelina's Oof chapter is tucked away on the side here. The Order of the Frilly is a special secret organization and I am a loyal member. Offending Commit challenged members to create chapters on their islands. There's so many unique member builds. If you know, you know. The new tower bridge is located at the other end of town, opposite of the first tower bridge from the beginning of this tour. It provides a lovely view of the airport and the animal area below. It also has a path that walks under the bridge. It was a tricky one to build because it's where two rivers meet and I had to decide how to restructure the area without closing off access. My animal area has two main areas. First, let's visit Coupe de Ville, the home of my 20 chooks. I don't sell my chooks. The oldest ones are nearly 50 years old, according to my journal. They are named classic ladies' names, except Goose. There is one single black chook. She was given the name Deanna by Irwin, and I kept the name. It was my mother's name. When the baby chook grew up and I saw it was black, and the only black one of my 20 chook farm, I cried. My mother had black hair. She passed in 2022, just months before Dinkum came out. I've tried to tell this story many times, 
but I couldn't help myself from tearing up. I know in my brain it's a coincidence, but my heart thinks otherwise. The second area is Pleepy Hollow in Van Baton Rouge. You guessed it, home to my pleeps and vombats. There are two levels connected by a sloped pass-through. They have plenty of feed with two silos, a nice water feature, and extra houses if they decide to sleep up top or down below. My adorable pleeps are named after types of textiles, like cotton and velvet. My vombats are named after nuts and seeds, like walnut and pistachio. Near Irwin's barn, there's a small fenced area for a single vombat. I suppose he likes to be alone, or maybe he just wants to keep closer to Irwin. The cooking area is located near the animal area, optimized for farm to table. Eggs and milk directly from the nearby farm keep it fresh. The billy kits and kegs are lined up for efficiency, as well as the ice cream makers and cheese makers on the side. The boxes keep ingredients and finished products organized. Up the way, the kitchen provides nice counter space and storage. The food modeler is here for quick turnaround as well. The Great Grains Company is where we process our feed and seed. Sugar, wheat, and corn are fed into the mills and stored in the bins here. There's a sitting area in the middle for business discussions. You can also see some of the produce from Jelly Farms on display. Jelly Farms is a large crop farm. There is a nice walkway separating the animal farm and the crop farm here. There's a worm farm for producing fertilizer, a tool shed for seeds, tools, and fertilizer storage, as well as the wheelbarrow and mower. We have a few raised garden beds and large wheat and sugar fields. Next to the large crop fields, there's also a smaller grass farm. Rain's nursery is also here. Rain sells seeds, so she's near the crops instead of the flower shop here on Porcelina. Although she does have some nice flowers out front. The original orchard still stands here. Nicely spaced out, even amount of fruit trees. It expanded into the orchard trail once we were able to make jams. I thought an orchard trail would be nice alternative to long rows of trees. It's pretty, yet organized, and at night, warm glow of the stone lanterns gives off the coziest vibes. The tree farm is a great place for logging and propagating bushes and other plants. We have all types of wood and sizes of trees, as well as some table saws and storage for instant crafting materials. I relocated my quarry to this section when I built the treasury, and I named it Quarry South. I wanted it to feel very industrial, so I used cement pathing and ramps, and the tin fence. I used a ton of hardwood lights to keep it well lit for nighttime production of valuable resources. The Porcelina Hydro Circuit is debuting as an unfinished project. I have built a lot of the entrance and grounds and fenced in the track, but it is still not complete. The water waste track is a natural formation original to the island at its conception. It also has a teletower for fast travel. I want to add obstacles and ramps and more decoration to the actual course. It was born to be a jet ski track. I just have to finish it. I am pretty proud of my map. I have fully developed east to west and south, but I have opportunities in the northern tropics area. 
Although I really want to leave some biomes untouched, like protected lands. I plan to post signs to make sure that happens. The patio is a small area to relax in the shade of the pergola. There's a small bar with jelly brew and it's next door to the pineapple corner if you get a craving. The fire pit has been around for a long time. It's a wooden deck with seating surrounding an inset fire pit for conversation and warmth. But be careful, fire will burn you if you get too close. Also, we need s'mores. The mangrove deck is a continuous work in progress that is outside of the city limits. It's a dual bridge with a deck in between, in the mangroves. It's such an interesting mixed biome area. I've yet to figure out how or what to decorate it. It's just one of those challenges we have in Dinkum. The telepad is centrally located on this wooden deck area. On one side, you can easily access the shopping district and Ellie's place. On the other side is the treasury, and directly in front is Ellie's workshop. I found it to be a great location for fast travel options. A red tile path leads up to an arena that is festively decorated for Christmas. Once you reach the end of the red path, you will see the peppermint pad. Peppermint Square is my holiday build from December 2023. Inside is pixel art on the map of a red and white swirl like a peppermint candy. It's full of lights and Christmas trees and tables of food. It reminds me of a holiday lights display where families go and have snacks and hot chocolate and enjoy the decorations while ooing and eyeing. I built this suspension bridge for a design ideas video. I think it's pretty unique for the pillars in the middle and I really love the lighting. I haven't finished the idea to where the path leads to or what will be on the other side, but I love the bridge build. This small aisle contains almost all of the biomes in its small area. It even has a doggo den. I think it's missing the pine forest, but it's pretty neat how it showcases so much in such a small space. Studio 23 is a recording studio where I would show design ideas in some of my YouTube videos. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about flowers and a few design ideas using flower boxes. First, let's take a look at which flowers grow in each biome. I made five areas and would usually come up with five design ideas within the space. I wanted it to be well lit, even though I usually record in the daytime. I included wardrobes in each of the areas to store the materials I needed for the builds. This fenced area is home to my saddled moo. It has some natural bottle trees, and once we learned they don't grow back, I saved what I still had and fenced them in. We refer to this as being a member of the Bottle Tree Preservation Society. The statue garden is a small park next to Ellie's place along the river that features some of the cement statues of the animals in the game. I had a small space to fill and came up with this idea not long after we got the lily pilly trees and marble benches. This seating area has existed in some fashion for a long time on the river's edge. I love the palm trees and the idea of a patio area along the water to hang out at night just fit, but watch out for the crocs. This game is so special to me. I can't say that I've ever dedicated so much time and effort into a video game. It continues to allow me to use my skills as a designer, like color theory and balance and spatial awareness. I love that I can enjoy a few dinkum days and laughs with my husband, and I so cherish the friends I've met along the way. It also inspired me to crawl out of my shell little by little and create this YouTube channel. Dinkum therapy is legit. It's my happy place. Thank you so much for letting me tell my story of poor Selena. She's a beautiful place somewhere far away from South City. It's not over by a long shot, but I felt it was finally time for a full tour. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.